I'm um, on this episode go shook. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Alright, guys. Yeah, my name is Baby Man, but technically I'm an African man. That's the reason why this cap is on my head. No man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I let me break down my name for you. My name, Ah. When Bessie daughter say Ah, you know what he mean. You don't play Okpo. <laughs> <laughs> my name is R. Ovakborayi Okoro Ono Tokwefe Ogeneru Ogeneru no I'm going to my roots What kind of roots? Why you not tell me those roots? <laughs> I know you I only know you as Paul Vakbo What you know Kodo Continue <laughs> Yeah My name yeah, yeah, That's my name Paul But people call me Baby Man Obviously I'm an artist So So guys check out my songs now, back to the reason why we are here. This one will joke. I'm here with Mr. Uzi Ben, as you all know. Victor Uzi Ben. Victor Uzi Ben. Mm. A very controversial human being online. <laughs> <laughs> controversial? Yeah, let me say. It. If that's the English you want to quantify, it, no, I like. Okay. Uh, today we are going to be tackling him because many people. There are a lot of questions that needs to be answered, and there's this misconception about the African r- traditional religion, and also the according to him, there are some secrets in the Christian religion that needs to be unveiled, and eighty percent of the people that practice this religion do not understand or do not have an idea of what is really going down or what has gone down before perhaps the secrets that surround the religion and the practice and their belief and um i don't know if i will believe him at the end of this episode if there mm-hmm. really has some <laughs> secrets anyways but uh, it's going to be a learning process for believers and non-believers yeah. of the tradition so i will advise you better click the subscription button make sure you like and at the end of this video, share the video, and it's going to be an amazing episode. And well, prepare yourself to learn because we are going to learn. You're going to learn a lot about the African religion, and of course, other religions, and how they can they have affected us as Africans, mm-hmm. and the good that they have done, and the negative and the harm they have caused to our society. So, over to you, Mr. Victor Uziben. How are you doing? Let me. I'm fine. Not the fear, not beat you. I don't <laughs> <have fun. laughs> you worry. Okay, so um, why do you think, and how far have you studied to f- understand that there's a secret that people do not know about the Christian religion? Okay, if I may have to help you, um, rephrase the question you were asking. You were saying that um. How far have I studied to be able to come up with some of my teachings online and why I'm going against um, Christianity and other religion at the same time and why I feel that Africans should not be involved or practice the Christian religion and why they should go back to their African tradition religion way. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Now, before you can say you want to defend something, before you can say, okay, um, this is how you should go, this is what you should do, this is how this is, you must have done an extensive, in-depth research on that thing. And research necessarily does not mean you want to find out some certain things. No. It should go down to the actual foundation. Where did this thing start? For example, if you want to do research about Abraham Lincoln, it would be very, very unreasonable to say to study research based on the fact that he was the president of America. Or you want to do research research on uh, Namdi Azikiwe, it would be very, very unreasonable to say you don't want to find out when he was born, what happened when he was born, the mother's name, the brother's name, the father's name. How it started his career and every other thing yeah. but one of the major problems we have here in africa is especially 
religions that have been introduced to Africa, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, Zoroastrianism, all of these religions that came to Africa, none of us have been able to say where did all of these started from. You will see a very matured person that has children already, that is clocking almost 60 years and 70 years and may eventually be an academia or a supposed graduate of the university and arguing with me about the authenticity of Christianity and the inferiority of the African traditional religion. You know, I do tell a lot of people, especially here in Africa, that if you are an African and you defend the religion of Christianity and Islam as against the African traditional religion and belief, you are the world's most miserable, daft, unlearned, disgraced individual to Africa. Because you have shown a high level of of illiteracy. Do you know why? Because the reason why you will defend Christian religion and the and Islamic religion as against the African traditional religion is because you don't really know the foundation of those religions, how it all started. How so foolish and daft can you be? That a religion of a people that are not close to air, the geographical or the boundary of Africa now become the savior of Africa. Christianity is from Europe. Islam is from Arab. What did Africa have? Our African traditional religion. The question here is this. Why was why were those religions established? What is the main purpose? How did they become an organized religion? The purpose of any religion on earth, any organized religion on earth, is actually to control people. You say, but you are the founder of the water religion. Is the idea of the water religion to also control people? That is the difference between the African traditional religion and every other religion. Because the African traditional religion is the roadmap to any religion on earth. Should be the yardstick for any religion on earth. In fact, the African traditional religion is the savior of the world. Because if we say, let's go back to history, you'll find out that even the Americans will go back to their original tradition, which is the tradition of the Red Indians, the original occupants of the Americans, before what? Christopher Columbus discovered them. And when you look at the lifestyle of the Red Indians, why is this so synonymous with the lifestyle of the, ba- of, of the what? Of the sand people in South Africa. Why is this so familiar with that? Why is the Red Indians culture, the way they dress, they adore themselves with leopard skin, with, um, what do you call it, with feather, just like the typical Igbo warrior in the 18th, in the 17th, 15th to 10th century. That is because every single religion and tradition and culture of the world migrated from Africa. And because of the vastness, the intelligence, the wealth of Africa, people discovered that there was something that is so unique and synonymous with Africa, which is embrace, love, and unity. So the typical African man is one that can befriend you in an instant. And we see that every day. If an African man visits America today, he can become friend with 100 people in 24 hours. But the white man will not. The white man is scared. He's skeptical. He always sees that there is somebody after him. But the black man is not like that. True. The black man is a friend for everyone to everyone. That is the reason why somebody will move from Wari to Lagos. And that same day he landed in Lagos that he wants to start business, he will definitely meet his brother. He will meet an Igbo man that is already a close friend with him. 
He stand me go. He say Afa. I be worry. Ah, you be worry. Ah, worry. Ah. Now I be tall up here. I say yes. Ah. But it's not like that in America. You cannot. You can't. You can't even enter the bus. You can't find yourself in Europe or any part of America, and you want to just be. They will call police on you. That is the only part of the world whereby you are walking the the back the backyard of somebody. They will call police. There is an, an intruder. But here in Africa, I am here recording. Someone will literally go to the back of my house and plug his phone and sit down and he's charging. Someone, stranger, will literally come knock on my door. Ah, boss, how far? Hey, I'll be at the phone. I won't charge my phone. Ah, oh, come inside. But in America or in Europe, where somebody is walking towards the door, what do they say? They start calling police. And we are told that they are the most secure people on earth. And Africa is there so much unrest. And if there is so much unrest in Africa, why can it, why would a stranger just walk in and you allow the stranger in? I get you. So you find that at the end of the day, why the, the reason why I said the most dumbest people in Africa are the ones that actually defend Christianity and Islam is because they have failed to embed the first rule of which research. Is, which is where is this thing coming from? They are quick. One said, Your dead ancestors. I said, One day you will be a dead ancestor. That as that man you are calling an ancestor that is dead, that has no power. There was a time he was alive. So how come Mary automatically has power to pray on behalf of you to God? How come Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John automatically become saints to pray on behalf of Africa to Mary and to Jesus? But don't you think there's a purpose why they believe that? There's no purpose. So... Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they were the propagator of the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Mm. They were. Paul was. Yes, he was. Paul is a saint. But do you know why they call Paul saint? He said because you encountered Christ in person. But it falls down to this. If the Bible said, when I go, you will do greater work, meaning it doesn't matter whether you witness the physical appearance of Christ, which is also a fraud, it means that because you believe and you decide to propagate the gospel, you are equal with the disciples. Yes. Because it is no religion said that we are all equal before God. So why is Ayob Abalola is not why is he not a saint that is being venerated across all African Christian or all, all Christendom? Why is Bess Nidaus are not a saint? Why is Emmanuel T Bush are not a saint? But we have Saint Mikey. We have Saint Augustus. We have Saint Valentine. So what you're saying, the fact that they were Christians and believers of the religion and they helped in, you know, taking the gospel according to their religion to places. The fact that they are not alive and they are ancestors right now. They should be prayed to and you know, they should be prayed to for them to intercede on behalf just like they, they do to the other you know people in the bible is that what you're saying we need to understand that the whites did not encounter africa in the 18th or 17th century no don't think that the portuguese came to africa and they discovered the bananga no the whites had already encountered africa even before the time the era of Jesus Christ. Even before the time of the creation of the Jew, the Jewish people, Israel as a nation, we were already existing, they've encountered us. So slavery had already begun. As at the time the Pert- Portuguese came to, came to Africa, Prophet Muhammad and his disciples had already come to Ethiopia. To capture who? Bilal. Why is Bilal so important in Islam today? Yet, Bilal is a black person. Bilal was a slave of the prophet. Bilal.
Israel was a slave of the prophet. And one of the things that most of this religion do, they teach you how to be a slave on earth and enjoy paradise in heaven. Yet, their clergymen, they fly private jets. Not only Christians. Do you want to see clergymen in Islam? They live flamboyant life. I want to understand, why do you want me to accept a religion that your God forbid another person from another religion to come to the land, your, your holy ground? Why? In Islam, a Christian cannot foot, uh, step his foot in Mecca. What kind of religion is that? What kind of religion that says, don't step your feet in Mecca? Whereas, look at it. Islam believes Jesus Christ is the prophet of God. If they believe that Jesus Christ is the prophet of God, and they believe the teachings of Jesus Christ, why are they not telling, why are they not doing against the teaching of Christ? They forgot that Jesus Christ preached that we are all equal, right? Yes, sir. They forgot that Jesus Christ was with the sinners, right? Yes, sir. So why is now Islam shut the door against people that are Christians? Now, look at it. I tell a lot of people, now I am attacking Jesus Christ. Muslims will stand up and defend Christ. Because if I'm able to show proof that Christ does not exist, I have destroyed two main religions on earth. Because the Quran said, if everything that has been revealed in the Quran, that everything is perfect, is it, they say it's even more perfect than the Bible. See, so there is no, there is nothing that is in the Quran that is. In fact, Quran is the most perfect book on earth. If Quran is the most perfect book on earth, why did Quran? Why did the Quran, the Holy Quran, why did it not point out? Why didn't the scholar not point out that Jesus Christ was actually created by Emperor Costa time and the 300 and something L, uh, bishop and the Council of Nicaea? The Quran quotes the Old Testament and the New Testament, yet they forgot that it was a synod. That put together the Old Testament and make it the Holy Bible. This was 100 years after Jesus Christ has left. Home. So if it was 100 years after Jesus Christ has left, that the synod that put together the Holy Bible, go online and check it. They, they know, Christians, they know. They know. But I will tell you, David, you don't know. Ahmed did that. He knows. He knows before he died. The other preacher of uh, Islam, Sudes, they know. There is no imam that is an intellect that does not know that the Holy Bible was people sat down and they decided what should be the Old Testament. It's a synod. My research work. A synod. Look at it. That was 100 AD. AD is after the death of Christ, right? Now look at it. The Jews did not close the canon of the Old Testament until the year 100 AD. Or just about. At the synod of Gemnia. Are you seeing? Gemnia. Where they decided which were the what canon canonical books, how do you call it? Canonical books, the canon, the can they call it from the word canon, canonical books 100 AD. That was when the synod of Jamnia made a decision these are going to be the number of books that will be in the Old Testament. 100 AD. Who were the rulers of the world then? Even the Jewish religion was still under the government of the Rome. Despite the fact that Christianity was the official religion of Rome. But they allowed the Jews to practice what they want to practice. 
but more than 20 percent of people of jews they converted into islam they converted into islam now when you go to the the story the account of jesus christ by the jewish historian josephus you will discover some discrepancies there you discover some some errors some some things do she make you understand that why would josephus a jewish man bear a roman title flavius is like i who's the band i want to tell the story of the isoko nation i was one that will be able to tell the story i was one that documented the story of isoko nation but you know my title ego victor who's the band how is that possible whereas the Igbos are the slave masters of the isoko nation so obviously will i be free enough to tell a complete story of the man jesus christ if as a jew my title is flavius and who is flavius flavius was the house the imperial house that were in charge of the jews and the whole world at large they were even ruling ruling what egypt so how come flavius josephus was able to give an account of christ that is just 100 percent almost some few percentage rhyme with the story of matthew mark luke and john do you know what it means it means because the story of flavius about jesus christ was already in circulation before the creation of matthew mark luke and john wow. so the story of flavius was the book through which the romans were able to come up and create the story of christ whereas there were other books circulating different men that rose in israel to rescue them from the hands of rome because there was a prophecy that a messiah will ro- rise and save the children of israel they were not waiting for a heavenly messiah they were waiting for an earthly messiah but the rome understood the psychology of men and they are so much believe in the supernatural that they use emotional spiritual emotions for them and that was how the whole idea of christ was created there were men that came that rose as messiah but they were killed there were lots of and that is why when you look at the actual story of a man that could look like christ he was not healing people in the vicinity he was a warrior yes he was a warrior who was fighting and there were cases of different people that the rome gave the de- decree okay this person is causing problem and commotion in the streets of jerusalem kill the person lots of them but guess what when the rome were to create that individual jesus there was no other way so perfect enough to create it why because rome had become a nation with different people they were indians there they were arab there they were african so you cannot just come up and say it is the jewish though the jews played more significant financial role in the rome jews were the only organized religion then so what they did they brought the story of jesus from the jew and brought the story of horus from africa because that is the, because the deity and the spirituality of Rome was based on the Kemet tradition. Who are the Kemet? The Africans. So we found out that the creation of Jesus Christ was in exact pantheological history of the person of Horus. And every single nation that have wrote, I hope you know that India was also a very great nation that were that we are taking slaves also. So we are not we are not surprised with uh, Buddha, the story of Buddha. Now, prior Christianity, which we are the major religion, there were so many heavy religions that were controlling people, and Rome needed to have their own religion. Even as small as Jew, they own the 
they had their religion. The only religion that was in Rome that, that was already dying was the Mithria, the Mithria religion. And guess what? What is the Mithria religion? The Mithria religion came from also Horus. Is the religion of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the virgin birth of Mithria. And Mithria was the savior of the believers. So how come the identical of the story of Mithya, the story of Horus, the story of Krishna, the story of the Buddha, how come they all rhyme to be the same story of Christ? So most Christians have not done an extensive research. How did this Christianity start? Did Jesus form? Is even in their Bible, it's obvious that Jesus Christ did not even form Christianity. So, he's staring at them in the book, but never, they will never. Do you know why? No. The white man, the Portuguese that brought Christianity to them, are they not the one championing gay rights? Are they not the one that have run away from Christianity? The Christi- Christianity started from Rome, Abi. And then where the Christianity actually started from? Where is all the historical start of Christianity? Where are they? It's not Jerusalem. Why is it that Rome is the head figure of Christianity? Yes, Christians go to Jerusalem. Because they don't want to believe. Because Rome had created a mirage for them there. So they go there to give Israel Israel tourism, oh my God. <laughs> Israel tourism money. Because any money you fly and go to Israel, Israel collect their cost. Because the Israelites, they know that African, we are the most dumbest people on earth. They know, they know we are dumb. Very dumb. If Israel knew that we are dumb and they are extracting money from us, if you don't know that, Israel know that you are dumb, why is it that Israel now pass a law that if you call the name of Jesus Christ in the streets of Israel, you'll be sentenced to jail, four years imprisonment. If you talk to a minor about Christ, you are going to almost seven years imprisonment. A minor. In Israel? Yes, yes, yes. You can check it out online. But I thought they practice Christian religion as well. <laughs> Who told you? People that practice Christianity in Israel, they are less than 1.2%. Yes. But they were mentioned in the Bible as people that. Now, do you know that even the dome of Solomon is controlled by Muslims? So you find out that. You find out that. Islam and Rome, they have to what? Rome and Prophet Muhammad and the people of uh, Islam, they have to have, they have to have what is called a consensus. Let's divide them. We will take the southern part for Christianity and we will take the northern part for Islam. And that's why the majority of the northern part of Africa, they are mainly Muslim. And the southern part of Africa, they are mainly Christian. And there is a great awakening. Because the question here is this. The Christians are saying Jesus is their savior. Muslims are saying the only way to, to God is believe in Prophet Muhammad and also believe in Jesus Christ. So don't you think I'm actually putting my life at risk saying that one of the greatest figure, one of the thread that hold the two religions together, Christ. Because when you look at the practice of Islam, go to not. Can you go to the mosque and say, Jesus is Lord? Hey, they go, they go flog you, they go pursue you. But now, I don't to say Jesus Christ is fake. Muslims are also saying, you don't know what you are saying. Even the Quran mentioned Jesus Christ. Ah, so now who's the Ben has, rise, has risen? Muslims are Christian and now brothers and sisters. <laughs> so the northern people did not know that Deborah also believed in Prophet Jesus Christ before they killed Deborah. So when the team is not favoring both parties, they become an enemy. Now, do you also know that the books of the New Testament, the books that makes the New Testament, they were decided upon around 8 around 283 AD after the ecumenical council of Nisi that, that held in Nisia the new testament was created 
Adio, 300 years after Christ has gone, at the Synod of Rome, under Pope Damasus, and people that insult me, whether Jesus Christ is real or not, some of them are not Catholic. So they do not know. They don't even know Baptist Church, the Presbyterian Church, they all broke out of the Catholic Church. What, what, what was the reason? Uh, because they don't, it's no longer favoring them now. Every Pope wants to, every every Reverend Father wants to be important. So they, are, they break out. Seeing that majority of their worship was Mithria. So they started breaking out. Now, Rome had already given them a purpose and that purpose has stuck to them. They didn't bother to go and do a, another research. How did this religion come to be? The only secret about Christianity is that they want to control men. That's the only secret. They want to be in charge. The Romans wanted to be in charge. There was a, there was opera in the streets. There were fight between the Mithria and the Jews. That was it. There was an opera in the streets. Christianity is a more violent religion than Islam. I I I, I can't accept that. I really you need to explain. The <laughs> reason why that. Christianity is no longer violent today is because those that are using it for gain they no longer need it they've got it what they wanted i don't i don't understand ah why would rome why would pope why would rome wants to use christianity for violence when they're already controlling half of the world okay now you think you know you're saying that they were if times. i'm arm robber come to rob and everybody cooperate everybody lie down people just lie down and they start bringing money from their pockets they drop it and once they say, Check the cupboard. There is money there. Also go there. You start telling Amroba we have to do to make the work easy. Will Amroba fight you? No, they will not fight you. If not, you would know that at the beginning of Christianity, Pope were actually sending his soldiers to places they call barbaric. They call them barbarians. To go and fight them and conquer them and bring gold back to Rome. Go online and find out. You will find out that the Portuguese came to Africa for trade and missionary. Who were the people that were approving those trips? The Church of England, the Queen of England, and the Pope. The Church of England is a Christian community. They will approve you to go on expedition to go and take slave, to bring slave down to Europe. Portuguese, the same thing. At the same time, the same office, we still send missionaries to go to the same Africa to preach the good news of God to them. Don't you see that is the same format that is happening? So what you're saying is, what I'm saying is this, they send Shell to Nigeria to take our oil, do everything, Ajib, all of them, take abroad suffering our people here our people will now resort to fighting riot will come or arrest will come because they need their own dividend they bring virus and, and then the government the start fighting with militants there is now unrest there is now war what does the same americans that came to soccer or what would they do they now have what is called department of state that will now send red cross United Nations now send them down here to come and do relief. That's bringing virus and bringing antivirus. So you find out that at the end of the day, you ask yourself, you are a black man and there is war going on. If you enter there, they will kill you. For white man go feel good that they do reports. Bule no be touched. Nigeria civil war. White men were taking news. They were sending Red Cross, bullet not detour them. Bullet not detour them. It's as if the bullet has ha, is a is 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 a racist bullet that will <laughs> kill black, but does not kill white. Anti white caution bullet. <laughs> You've watched a lot of Yellowstone and the rest of that. The white will come and do, and they will rescue their white away and leave the people you came to save because they've got what they want. There was a comedy I watched, Kelly and Pelly. He said, he said, hey, please come and help us. He said, oh, we cannot help you. There is nothing. He said, 
but we have a lot of natural resources we have oil here before he could open his mouth to say we have oil here troops were already here fighting killing the militants and that's what happened our leaders and this was how they were able to colonize us they come to eat us and they come with what a religion of peace Yes, they are still the ones that are causing the havoc. 